I started my athletic career on the track, so I pole vaulted at the University of Wisconsin. After I graduated, I realized I needed a little bit more of a lifetime sport and probably meant much like many other people who found cycling, kind of just picked up a bike on a whim. Did a lot of criterium racing, and then once gravel started picking up, I really took interest in the longer endurance racing, and my first race was Steamboat in 2019, and just have really liked and enjoyed what gravel racing is since then. So the Lifetime Grand Prix is seven races spread out through the season, mixed with gravel and mountain bike races. There's seven races. You use the top five in your scoring. It is unique in the sense that there's no other series in gravel or mountain biking like it. I think it's really cool now that gravel has created a space where women can make their professional careers in gravel. To any young woman who's interested in pursuing cycling as a career, I would just say stay at it, right? This sport does have a lot of ups and downs. You know, it's, it is really tough at times, but it's also just the most rewarding thing. So I would say stick at it, um, you know, stay dedicated and, and persevere through the hard times so that you can enjoy the, the good ones. We're here at Crusher and Latusher. All the things that I really don't like, high altitude, long, long climbs in the heat. And so really just using these races as an opportunity for me to kind of embrace that uncomfortableness for myself. I mean, I think it's a relatable state to be in, right? Like a lot of us are uncomfortable out there. You know, we're not sure if we can do it. And so I think I'm ready to see what I'm made of out there. Um, you know, me, Finishing this race, honestly, is gonna be a big win for me. We do have some strategies that we plan to use during this race. We know that Lauren DiCrescenzo is gonna be our top rider in the race. Just being out here with her and seeing her ride the climbs, like I know that she's gonna be a top contender. I think she's gonna be the best, and so our team's gonna work for Lauren. We do hope to make the race quite dynamic from the beginning. She's gonna go on the first climb and, and see if anybody wants to come with her. I think I did my first mountain bike race when I was 14, and I kind of gravitated towards doing the longer mountain bike races. Uh, did my first 100 mile mountain bike race when I was 15 years old. And for a long time, 100 mile mountain bike racing was my main discipline. Um, and then as gravel started getting more and more popular, the thing that I really liked about gravel racing in the US was that it really seemed to embrace long distance. You know, the most popular gravel race in the world is 200 miles long. It was kind of a natural progression to start doing that and um, I think at this point I do more gravel racing than I do mountain bike racing, although I still, I still love mountain bike racing as well. These lifetime Grand Prix races can have pretty different demand. For example, Unbound is a 10 hour day and it tends to be a little bit more of a steadier effort whereas you know, on the polar opposite end of the spectrum, uh, Schwamigan is a two hour mountain bike race, very punchy course you know, a bunch of 30 second climbs where you're just sprinting up. Especially if I'm trying to peak for a certain race, I try to think about what are the demands of that race and try to tailor my training specifically to that event. It seems like this Lifetime Grand Prix series is here to stay. I was 16th in the series last year, would really like to see if I can crack a top 10, maybe this year, maybe in future. And then if I crack a top 10, maybe I'm gonna have to bounce it up and go to see if I can crack a top five, I don't know. Factor has been awesome, and this is not the sponsorship talking. I, I honestly tell this to people. The Ostro Gravel, I think, is the fastest gravel bike that you can get on the market. They basically took an aero road bike and made the tire clearance wider, which is exactly what I've been wanting for so long and Factor did it. Aerodynamics is probably the most important marginal gain, if you will. I think sometimes the gains from aerodynamics can be so great that you can't even call them marginal. The Ostro Gravel, like I said, I think it's, it's the perfect bike for uh, an Unbound, a Mid-South, a Big Sugar, something where aerodynamics is so important. Let's talk about this race though. We're here at Crusher and the Tusher. It's basically a climbing race. 
And you could argue that aerodynamics is not very important at this race. There's probably 25 minutes of the course in the middle where aerodynamics really matters. And then the rest you're either climbing or, or descending. And because of that, I've actually gone for the Factor Lando hardtail mountain bike with some important modifications. I put drop bars on it and I put a Fox gravel fork on it, which does steepen the head angle and it steepens the head angle to the point where it's kind of in line with the Ostro gravel. So a little bit more in line with a gravel bike, less, less on the mountain bike side. Uh, why would I do that? Um, it's, it's so that I can run mountain bike tires. I've done a lot of testing. If you have a very fast rolling pair of mountain bike tires, they're usually have lower rolling resistance than most of the gravel tires on the market on rough terrain. So that's kind of my thinking behind running this bike at a course where aerodynamics doesn't matter a whole lot. Obviously, being a mountain bike, it's, it's a lot less aerodynamic than the Ostro gravel but the weight penalty isn't that big, and I think the rolling resistance is gonna make up for it. Most dominant is obviously uh, Keegan Swenson. He just dominated the series last year, and so far he's, he's won two out of two, so he's still dominant. And Crusher and the Tusher, he lives here in Utah, and he's, he's good at altitude and he's good at climbing, so you'd be, uh, wise to bet that he would probably win the race. Um, so he's, he's probably the biggest competitor here for sure. I was a mountain biker for pretty much all my life. There's good trails around where I grew up and I've raced mountain bikes since I was 17. And at 17 years old, um, I tried out road and it just like went super well, won national and then just went all in into the road for five years. And with COVID, it really changed the scene in North America, the, the road cycling scene. And uh, yeah, gravel to me was just the perfect transition so I could mix my mountain bike skills and my road skills. And that was the perf perfect mix for gravel. It's very different, so uh, if it's like a, a race that I can win, um, I will do more of a build towards it. Uh, there's so much racing during the year that you kind of have to choose your battle. So it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be on the start line thinking I'm there to win every race, but it also means that there are some races that I put more emphasis towards. So yeah, I adjust training depending on on the races that I think I can, I, I can do the, the best at. So, I mean, you, you go to up and down. Like, I wouldn't say I have a good, uh, cheerful mindset all race, like, uh, especially unbound. I feel like, to me, when I'm in a group, it's uh, easier to stay focused and stuff because in unbound, you're most likely gonna find yourself by yourself un unless you don't flat and you're really lucky. I would use cycling as a way to appreciate improvement. Life is like this. I think a great life is a life that you constantly improve. And I think cycling is a very concrete way to do it, at least for me. The Astro Gravel, the new gravel bike is, I wouldn't want to ride any other gravel bike. Let, let's put it like that. The way they listen to athlete really makes the bike the best it can be. And I think, uh, that proximity that I have with Factor is uh, very, very uh, valuable to me because I feel like uh, whatever I think can improve the bike and make it faster, they listen and they make it faster. I'm using the uh, Factor Ostro Gravel with black ink, a stem, seat posts and wheels. And all the bikes is in the GRX, so um, very good braking power, super secure. Um, hoods, very good shifting. I'm running the Kenda 42, so that's a 40 mil uh, tire. Probably gonna have 32 PSI and 34 at the back. So that's, that's, that's pretty much my setup. I think the Astro Gravel can do it all. It's super aero and uh, it's too super light.
went pretty well. Uh, I don't know what place I finished because we, we just finished. I haven't looked at the results, but I thought that I executed the race well. Um, my strategy was to uh, pace conservatively because I've done enough altitude races at this point to know that uh, if you go too hard at the beginning, it's way easier than at low altitude to blow up. I don't know, five minutes into the first climb, I was probably in 50th place, uh, but I was I was steadily catching riders up the climb as they were as they were getting blown off the front group. The last hour of the race, I was with a group of five or six, and man, I think I think that's the most pain I've been in so far this year. It was really hard trying to hold wheels. Came down to a sprint finish, and I mean, I did what I could, but I didn't have much of a sprint in me. I've now placed first, second, and third at this race in all of my years. <laughs> it was really, really, really hard. The climbing, it just never ends. Yeah, so he got away from me on the first climb, and then I rose to the top with Fabia and uh, Ruth Winter. I was making up time, making up time, but it just didn't have enough time to make up enough time. <laughs> so yeah, kudos to Sophia for, we both set the course record today. Um, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> cool. I mean, I'm not happy about the, the result. Um, I think it's, it's always a hard effort out there. And uh, I think my legs were good. Um, I just had, I just didn't have the right mindset today. Um, it's rare that it happens. I had a really good month of racing uh, last last month with two wins, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't have the knife in my teeth. Uh, I was for sure uh, hoping for for a better result. So um, yeah, I'm normally not really mad at myself because I feel like I most of the time feel like I give it all out there, but uh, just didn't feel like I I raced today. So uh, yeah, my bad for. I hope it's not too negative, but that's, that's just being uh, true to how I felt today. <laughs> what makes this race special? There's people in every switchback giving you water. Like they're not part of the race, they're not officially a feed zone, but they're just like with the hose spraying you, giving you water. So it was hard not to have a good time because honestly at each turn someone was smiling, asking me if I wanted something, making sure I was not too hot so yeah that 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 last climb it, it took one hour you you're very happy where you're on top but at least all the people make it make it a lot better <laughs> so yeah that that's probably the highlight of it